Hello friend, uh, my name is Steve Bakta. Uh, I'm a concerned citizen, I guess you would say, and someone who has been thinking about climate change for many years and just wanted to get something down um, and kind of just break it all down because I think there's a lot out there and uh, it gets really confusing and you feel like you have to micromanage every decision of your life to think about climate change and uh, I kind of wanted to boil it down to five major things you could think about doing um, rather than nitpicking all the little different things um, and hopefully make it less daunting. Um, I am a pediatrician uh, and a parent and um, someone that's just worried about this in the future as you may be as well. Um, I live in a northern suburb of Chicago and uh, hopefully you find this useful. So if you're watching this, you probably are very well aware of all these different causes and effects of climate change, but I want to highlight the bottom here of kind of what we're worried about, or at least what I'm worried about long term, and that's what, how it's going to impact people in the long run over the next hundred years, and that's displacing populations, a lot of poverty, really, this is going to really affect people that are poor more than anybody else. Um, obviously there will be some deaths. Um, hunger and malnutrition and increased risks of just like potentially having more disease in the world um, and food and water shortages and who, who knows what else. I mean, it's hard to predict exactly how climate change is going to affect us. Um, so I'm just worried about the um, dangers that it could, could result in. Um, and this is just kind of to go more into that on the, on the top you see the places that have the highest emissions uh, and cause the problems, which would be the United States, Canada, uh, and Asia and Europe, uh, are actually going to be affected least by the climate change in the long run, which is kind of sad. Uh, Africa and South America will bear the brunt of the impacts, um, but um, I'm just concerned about those populations. Um, uh, as opposed to some people, I'm not, I don't think this is going to be the end of the world. Um, I, there are definitely bigger problems in the world. Um, if you research this or read about this a lot, um, uh, I think uh, uh, unaligned AI is, I guess, our biggest risk, um, that we create some kind of AI that, that is our demise or some kind of engineered pandemic. Um, but I really can't do anything about those two things. Um, I, I'm not planning on creating AI that's going to kill us and I'm not planning on creating a pandemic myself, um, but this unforeseen anthropogenic risks uh, basically is that we change our environment in such a way that the planet is unlivable. And uh, they list climate change further down, but basically the third, the fourth, the sixth, and the seventh things are all related to climate change. So um, again, and, and that's something I actually think I, as a person living in the world, I can personally do something to help. Um, the other things really can't do much to, uh, to avoid. And just some background about me. Uh, I am a meliorist. Meliori uh, if you don't know that word, I actually, I just love this word and what it means. And that is someone who believes that the world is getting better and that the that humans are a major cause of that. And so I've always been an optimist, but I've kind of merged into this meliorist who, uh, sees that if, I feel like if, if we understand a problem, we can work together and improve our, our conditions. Um, and I feel like that has been happening uh, over the course of human history, and I believe it will continue to happen. And I think we will solve climate change. Um, and I think it's going to be hard. I think uh, there will be a lot of uh, growing pains. But then once we solve it, I think it's going to be amazing if we can control our climate in the future that we can potentially live for a very long time on this planet, but we obviously have to get through this first big threat. Uh, and here's, you know, really what we're trying to avoid. Um, if you look at the first two red bars, if we can have moderate emissions, I mean, there's going to be death, um, obviously, but it will be less than if there's very high emissions. And at th those projections for the high emissions deaths in 100 years, or actually 80 years from now, that's as much as all of infectious diseases, which is, that's a whole medical subspecialty. So as a pediatrician, this very, this concerns me a lot. Um, a lot of the kids, or a lot of the people who would die from climate change would be children. Um, so as a pediatrician, I feel like this is a huge threat 
to the health of young children just because they don't won't, they won't do well if they can't get to water or if uh, they, the heat will affect them worse than adults obviously um, so I'm very worried about this and hoping we can do something about it um, I also am very concerned about all the species it's going to affect um, an endemic species is a animal that has, has to live in a specific place so for example snow leopards um, which is one of my favorite animals um, unfortunately I feel like they are going to have a really hard time with uh, the next hundred years um, they may only all, all these animals may only be able to exist in zoos for a while until we can return conditions to where they could live in their back in their environments so um, obviously we want to try and limit or I think we should try and limit the number of species that go extinct through this period um, but it's going to be it's going to be hard um, this is a great breakdown of where uh, the greenhouse gases are coming from so as you can see it's largely an energy issue um, and I mean a lot of this is out of our control right a lot of this is things that governments are going to have to solve but there are small sections of the chart um, where there's like residential buildings, road transport, food, things that you can make choices that can have an impact. It's not going to be as big of an impact as a government policy, but it can still have an impact. Um, and then if you, you break it down by country, you see that China and the U.S. are definitely major um, in Asia, major, major contributors to the output right now because um, those are the wealthier nations um, and then you can see projections is if we if we do nothing um, we're going to have at least a four to five degree increase which would be very uh, bad uh, lots of deaths and lots of ex uh, ex species going extinct um, and, and you see where our current pledges are at I, I, from this chart I just want to take away that it looks like you know, about from where we are now in 2023, uh, it seems like we'll have to have about a half half um, cut in our admissions at least. Uh, I mean, two degrees would be would be preferential or, or as low as we can go. But trying to stay under the three degree increase would mean at least a half reduction in our admissions. So that's where I kind of focus and think about ways big changes I can make or big things I can do to get to that half um, having the admissions of where we are now. So here we go. I don't want to take too much of your time, but here's the five big things I think we can do um, as individuals to, to help this process. Um, so first of all, obviously voting is huge. Um, if, you, if you live in a, a swing state in particular um, or some place where you feel like uh, your vote makes a big difference, um, then voting with green matters in mind uh, is very important. Um, you can see that this is just a chart showing that um, the policy change um, resulting from winning an election or having a, a, a person in the government who cares about these, um, these issues uh, and votes and tries to promote policies that promote green living will have a huge impact, a 32 ton impact versus like if you went the whole year without driving your car that would only be a two ton reduction so getting that person in office who can make governmental changes is huge so don't skip elections and when you do vote try to research who is gonna be the best for the environment secondly i think the biggest thing is talking about it that's kind of the reason i wanted to record this and talk to you about it is just raising awareness that this is a huge issue uh, an issue that is going to have major um, impact on lots of lives in the future uh, uh, and so uh, something we should be talking about something we should be thinking about and trying to make changes um, and if you have a local green group uh, mine happens to be going green well met um, i think one of the best things i did in this whole journey um, is subscribing to their newsletter and so i get an email once a month just with tips and different opportunities in my community um, and it just keeps keeps it at the front of my mind, keeps me thinking about it. So if you have a local group, I recommend joining their um, newsletter and then uh, just talking to people about uh, green issues. Because um, the more awareness that there is, then the more people will talk about it and vote about it and make changes. So 
Um, those are the two biggest things I think people can do. Um, now, if we look at individual households um, and look about where the where your emissions come from, so food is food is a big one, 25 percent. Uh, energy, obviously, the energy your house uses is a big one, 16 percent, and then um, your uh, fuel uh, or how you transport yourself is another 14 percent. Uh, so if we focus on those, I mean, that's a big chunk of of what you're doing. So uh, some of the changes. I recommend um, are based on those big chunks. Um, so here are the two big heavy green lifts uh, if you are able to things that you can do that will have a huge impact because there's a lot of things you can do but you want to do something that's going to have a big impact and I only recommend doing these if you're an adult over 18 just um, because I think they're hard and they're big life changes and then also if you don't have young children if you have young children like I would just worry about the first two things like voting and talking to people about the environment don't try to change your lifestyle because you got just take care of your kids <laughs> but if you have the ability to do these things um, and the bandwidth so the first is to kind of is to ditch red meat red meat um, of all things produces tons of emissions of specifically um, cow meat and secondarily uh, lamb um, so if, if you just replace those with any of these other proteins, cheeses, uh, chicken, fish, first of all, it'll be healthier. Uh, and secondly, you'll do so much better for the environment. Um, so if you're able to reduce or just replace um, red meat with those options, then you'll be doing a huge favor to the environment. Um, and what's interesting about this graph, if, if you scroll down to the mammal diversity, biodiversity, the second bar from the bottom, just look at how much there's only 94% of the mammals in the world are livestock, which is just totally ridiculous. And only 6% are wild animals. And that's because people eat so much cow, so many cows. Um, same thing with the bird biodiversity. It's because we eat so much, so many birds, but specifically beef is so bad for the environment. It takes up so much land use that land could be better used to plant trees. That's the green bar. And then actually, producing the meat produces so much emissions. Um, so if you see, if you take that, if you take beef, if you want to eat a much better source of protein, switch to nuts because nuts actually have a negative land use change and they uh, produce oxygen by growing the nuts. So uh, switch from beef to nuts and you will greatly help the environment. All right, the second big ask or the, and the fourth thing that you can do is having your have, having your fuel or thinking about ways to have your fuel use um, for transportation now this is hard to think about and uh, i've struggled with this a lot um, because it's hard to get around obviously without driving and flying um, so some different options you can think about if you really are committed to this um, traveling half as far by plane would be one thing so if you we're going to take a really long plane trip somewhere overseas, maybe thinking about traveling somewhere locally instead to get the same experience, um, or at least nationally. Also, if you uh, are we're going to travel for a conference, thinking about teleconferencing instead. Um, it's been a big um, change since COVID. I think a lot more um, conferences and things are available through teleconferencing and save a lot uh, for the environment. So those are options. If you can work from home, uh, that can ha and or at least half the time, that would have your your fuel use. Uh, if you can commit to commuting by biking or public transportation, half of the time, that would have your fuel. And then long term, because uh, a lot of people think you know they have big travel plans in their future, um, thinking about getting there by a boat rather than flying there. So if you have the time when you're retired, um, cruises are far better for the environment than flying to your destination. Uh, and you can see uh, e-bikes being the best and planes being the worst as far as uh, emissions go. All right, so those are really the four things. Voting, talking about the environment with your community and uh, friends, um, thinking about replacing red meat with something else as far as protein goes, and then having your, your fuel output. Um, if you do those four things, you're way ahead of the game. Five, this is walking the talk. This is kind of just uh, 
extra things. These won't have as big of an impact, but they'll make you feel good day to day. Um, or if you can't do those other four things, these are other ways that will help at least a little bit. And uh, I, I like this picture because it's like, it is really like footprints. It's like showing people the way so that they can follow in your footsteps. So walking the talk. Um, so one thing I love to do carrying around reusables. So I always have a water bottle with me. So even if this is one thing you don't think about, but when you go to a fast food place, you don't have to take their cup. You can bring your water bottle in and use the machine. They actually like when you do that, they save a lot of money because you don't use their cup. And you just say, I have a cup, I don't need your cup. And so you save uh, the planet by just using your water bottle. Um, same thing with your, obviously your reusable bags. Hopefully you keep those in your car for when you go to the grocery store. And then at work, I keep silverware with me all the time. So I'm never using plastic silverware. I also have something like this in my car. So when I go out to eat, I don't ever have to take a doggy bag. I just bring this container in with me. Um, and then I take whatever I need home in the container. And I don't use a doggy bag or styrofoam. Um, and same thing with fast food restaurants. I don't use plastic utensils. I just bring my own silverware in and it's much better. I mean, this plastic utensils stink. Metal is much better. So always carrying reusables with you wherever you go is, uh, is big. And then other people see you do it and they're like, oh, that's a great idea. At home, if you don't already have one, smart thermostats are great so that when you're not at home, you're not heating your home or cooling your home. It will save you a ton of money and save a ton of energy. If you use ComEd um, or whatever uh, energy company you use, uh, if you call them, they usually will send somebody out to look at all your appliances and offer you ways to save money and save energy. So I highly recommend you do that. If you have never done that, they will save you money and energy and help save the planet. Um, for your appliances, obviously updating your appliances with really good uh, energy efficient ones. I wouldn't buy something new if you, something's not broken, like use something until it's out of commission and then when you replace it or have to replace it, buying an energy efficient one. Uh, when you wash your clothes, there's lots of detergents that will work with cold water now, so washing in cold water. Basically hot water is really energy uh, expensive, so trying to limit the amount of hot water you use. Um, also heat so to dry your clothes is energy intensive, so drying things on a drying rack is useful. And then uh, not washing your dishes, just putting them into the dishwasher and running your dishwasher when it's full uh, with dirty dishes uh, is the best way to do your dishes. And also it makes it way easier. You don't have to scrub them. Just put them in the dishwasher. The Most work dishwashers work great. And uh, anything that's left over, then you can scrub that off. But usually the dishwasher does a great job. This is a tricky one, but uh, taking shorter showers and colder showers. Um, two tricks I like to use is I play music during my shower and I try to have the whole shower done within one song. And then uh, I try to work out right before my shower so my body temperature is already high and I don't have to use as much hot water. I just ended up taking a colder shower because my body's hot. Um, thinking about the services you use at home. So I, I do my own lawn uh, maintenance and cleaning, but uh, if you hire someone to do that, trying to hire people that have uh, maybe use electric lawnmowers, lose, use electric leaf blowers instead of gas powered ones, people that use eco-friendly cleaning supplies um, is just some an option or something to think about. I love composting. I don't know if you are able to, but if you have a backyard, um, a backyard composter, not only because it obviously reduces the amount of food waste you produce, but just because it connects you with the cycle of your food and so you kind of are more aware of how much you're wasting. Uh, it also connects you with the environment because you take the compost, you put it into your garden and you can grow your own food which is really cool um, and it just kind of makes you think about where your food comes from. Um, so I highly recommend that as well as just getting out in nature, walking around your neighborhood, walking around uh, parks if you have them just to connect with what am I, you know, why do I care about this in general? So. Getting outside, composting is, I just love composting. It, you, it's amazing how much your food can just shrink down and turn into soil. So I highly recommend you start if you haven't done that. Um, as far as gift giving goes, try not to buy stuff. I mean, just stuff in general, we have so much stuff. Um, so instead try to gift people local experiences like to a sh local show or to a local restaurant uh, rather than buying them something that they probably don't need. And same thing when you, uh, when a birthday's coming up for you or a holiday, like letting people know I'd rather have, 
you know, tickets to something, then, you know, you buy me something. Uh, that way people don't buy you something, then you just never use it. You probably heard of uh, reuse, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, but the number one thing you need to do is refuse. I, I think this is, we are always offered free things and just junk that we don't need. So try your best to just refuse stuff first, then reduce what you what you need, uh, what you do need. Um, so trying to buy less clothes, um, just less of everything, <laughs> everything material. And then uh, reusing things. Um, I like this picture of the glass jar because that's exactly what I do. If, if I'm done with a jar of jam, and then I just put it on the shelf and I drink out of it. Um, and those are some of the best uh, cups I have actually. <laughs> Um, obviously recycling what you can't reuse so whenever you buy something thinking about its end product so I like to buy glass and metal because I know those things will be easily recycled I don't like to buy stuff in plastic packaging because I know it's going to be down cycled glass and aluminum tend to recycle much better um, and then plastic it's hard to avoid plastic altogether but recycle what you can and then plastic film you have to collect that and recycle that it's a it's a process but in general just trying to cut back on everything and then rotting uh, or composting the rest it's great uh, and then last uh, slide I just wanted to mention that if you do have extra money on hand and want to use it to help the environment there are something called carbon offsets um, if you go to the native um, website and just put in Google native carbon offsets it will help you calculate how much carbon you use every year uh, it's actually kind of a fun thing to do every year just to see if you're getting better every year um, and then it will calculate how much money to donate to offset the carbon you produce. They basically use it to plant trees uh, or do other things. And then Giving Green is a website that uh, tries to make your money go the furthest toward helping the planet. So uh, I recommend them as well um, if you, again, are looking to donate money to, to help the environment. But really your actions are much more important than, than just throwing money at the problem. So hopefully you found this helpful and uh, good luck.